Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome AJC Executive Director David Harris. which is all the Japanese I know, but means thank you very much, or at least I hope it does. And thank you for the great work of the Asia Pacific Institute, led by Jeff Stone and Shira Lohenberg, who brought us to this truly historic moment. This is the first time in post-war Japanese history that any Japanese prime minister has ever addressed the Jewish organization, and we're proud that it was AJC. Before introducing our next distinguished speaker, I want to let you know that we have here diplomats from nearly 30 countries who've joined us tonight. From the Embassy of Antigua and Barbuda, from the Embassy of Australia, from Austria, from Brazil, from Bulgaria, from Burkina Faso, from Denmark, from Georgia, from Germany, from Guatemala, from Israel, from Italy, Japan, Jordan, Mexico, Montenegro, Romania, Spain, the Netherlands. I want to be sure that's the real Netherlands and not the Iran in 10 years Netherlands. <laughs> Armenia, Azerbaijan, Cyprus, Singapore, Ukraine, Hungary, Costa Rica. May I ask the diplomats to please stand up and be recognized by our audience tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, in 1991, AJC took a historic position with a reluctant administration in Washington that didn't want to see the breakup of the Soviet Union quite so quickly or the reestablishment of independence of Ukraine in particular. AJC wrote to President George H.W. Bush and said, Mr. President, do it. Recognize Ukraine's rebirth of independence. And we urged members of Congress to support that position. And to the credit of the administration, they did, in the end, recognize that rebirth of Ukrainian independence. That was 24 years ago. The road has not been linear. It's not always been easy. But the road has been an important one. Not only did it put the Soviet Union into the dustbin of history, and thank God for that, but it established a principle that is cardinal for us in our view of the world, that nations should have the destiny to chart their own futures as democratic countries. <laughs> Roughly a year and a half ago, to fast forward, we saw that right of Ukraine challenged brutally by a determined neighbor that said, no, we will not let you chart your own destiny. And Ukrainians, by the millions, in the cold of winter, put their lives on the line and in too many cases lost their lives in order to assert their desire to join with the West to celebrate democracy and to continue their independence. 
AJC stood with those brave Ukrainians in Maidan Square and elsewhere from the beginning, and we stand with them to this day. And we know that among those who were killed in Maidan Square were Ukrainian Jews who shared the exact same hope for their country as others in Ukraine. As many of you know, with the help of an anonymous donor in the audience tonight, we asked Dr. Sam Klieger to move to Kiev and to become our virtual ambassador there in order to assert our commitment on the ground. And I thank you, Sam Klieger, for leaving your family in New York and going to live in Kiev for months at risk to yourself in order to assert that principle. And the Prime Minister of Ukraine, who had, I will tell you, it's no secret, lots of things on his mind these days, including the continued annexation of Crimea, the continued attempt to occupy and destabilize eastern Ukraine, nonetheless chose to come from Kiev tonight in order to speak to the AJC Global Forum. And I'm proud that he made that decision, and I'm equally pleased that as many as 50 Jews from Ukraine also flew specially from Kiev, from Odessa, from Kharkiv, from Dnepropetrovsk in order to be here tonight. Please stand up. Please stand up. And we're joined as well by our friends from the Ukrainian-American community with whom we've worked and partnered and authored joint letters to the President of the United States because we believe the Ukrainian issue is not for Ukraine alone. It's for Europe. It's for the United States. It's for people who believe in democracy and the right to chart one's own destiny. And that's why I'm so honored tonight to introduce to you the Prime Minister of Ukraine and our dear friend, please join me in welcoming Arseniy Yatsenyuk. Let me say shalom to everyone. <laughs> it's such a great pleasure to address such a distinguished audience. I am deeply moved. I've seen two televised address from two prime ministers, Chancellor Merkel and Prime Minister Abe. So there is a trick, you know, if you have two televised statements uh, from different prime ministers, the sad one is alive and free of charge. <laughs> You know, thinking about my speech, I was thinking about the history. How much we have in common. Ukrainians and Jewish community, we have experienced too much. We have lived through very difficult times. And we faced unspeakable evil. Just last month, all of us commemorated the end of the Second World War in Europe. And I was thinking, how could it happen? It's just beyond the reason. When millions of Jews were killed in the Holocaust, for what? just for their desire to live and to exist as a nation, as a human being, as a people. When millions of Ukrainians 
during the Great Famine, or Holodomor, had been killed by Soviets for the same reason. For their desire to exist and to flourish as a nation. But we've passed through this. We survived. And we exist. And we will survive. And we will fight. And we will fight all our enemies. Because we are strong nations. <laughs> For today, my country is facing a tremendous challenges. You are well aware that we have a neighbor. Israel have similar neighbors. <laughs> that actually illegally annex Crimea. And for today, Russia, that illegally annexed Ukrainian territory, actually launched a crackdown on Crimean Tatars, on their liberties and their human rights. Then Russian-led terrorists and Russian troops invaded Donetsk and Lugansk, which is the eastern part of Ukraine, and Russia started to intimidate the entire world. So we are facing the real war with Russia. Ukraine is the only country in the world that is fighting against the Russian regular army. We succeeded in deterring Russian military. And I commend and truly appreciate the efforts of AJC, David, and your personal contribution in sending the letter to the White House with a clear claim to support the Ukrainian people in our fight against the Russian-led aggression. Ukraine is defending not only Ukraine. We are defending Europe, and we are defending an international law and order. So, <laughs> so it's not just about us. I mean, it's not just about the Ukrainian people. This is about the globe. Why Ukraine matters to the world and to the United States of America? You probably do remember that in 1994, Ukraine, together with the US, UK, and another country which is neighboring to Ukraine, signed a notorious Budapest Memorandum. Put it in a nutshell, Ukraine relinquished one of the biggest nuclear arsenal in the world. And we were promised to get guarantees of our territorial integrity, independence, and sovereignty. No weapon on the one hand. On the other hand, we lost Crimea, and we lost the east of Ukraine. And this concrete fact actually undermines our global efforts of nuclear non-proliferation. Just imagine, one can play with this, for example, in Iran or another country saying that, look, this country abandoned the nuclear weapon and they lost the territory. So what kind of additional guarantees we can get? And this is the lesson, and we have to, to, to draw out of this lesson very important issues. Ukraine matters too much for nuclear non-proliferation, and Ukraine matters too much for the peace and stability in the entire Europe. We strongly believe that we will regain control over Donetsk and Lugansk, and I strongly believe that the time will come and Crimea will be again the part of Ukraine, and we will control our territory. <laughs> we 
once again, one Ukraine matters, because Ukraine matters for the unity of all members of the European Union. Ukraine matters for the unity of the free world. For today, the free world is in jeopardy. And this is the war not just between Ukraine and Russia. This is the war between the past and the future. This is the war between the dark and the light. This is the war between the freedom and dictatorship. And to win this war, we have to be united. United, we win. Divided, we fail. Nothing has changed after Abraham Lincoln. So we have to stay united with our European friends. And we have to be united between the United States, the European Union. Your unity is the best recipe and the best answer to any aggressor and to any aggression. United and strong respond to those who want to undermine the global order, to those who want to draw the new lines after the Second World War, to those who do not respect freedoms, liberty, who do not respect democracy, and who do not respect our nations. They are our enemies. It's really a great privilege for me to address you. And on behalf of my country, on behalf of my government, let me tell you just very simple words. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for your open hearts and minds. We will never surrender. We will fight and win. We will succeed. This is our future. Thank you so much for having a chance to address you.